Hey guys, welcome back to week six of the NVIDIA Hearthstone Pro-Am Tournament. My name is Frodan. Today I'm joined by Nymph, who is once again reunited with me online for a few set of games. Nymph, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. Like, um, I, I really, I'm sad that I missed the, the last one uh, last week, but, uh, you know, sickness. And uh, But I'm fully recovered now, happy to cast some games with you, and hopefully I will not miss any of those amazing games here at NVIDIA uh, Pro-Am Tournament, because, you know, we are getting closer and closer to the finals. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it's only going to be a couple more weeks before we see who's going to go to the finals and uh, who's going to get that 100 points as well as $25,000 prize pool that's being dip given away. Now, uh, for anybody who's just tuning in and doesn't really understand the format of the event, uh, the way that NVIDIA happens is that it's going to be 16 players that are amateur and 16 players who are pro players. Uh, they're going to be meeting one giant 32-person bracket. Uh, this makes it one of the biggest open tournaments possible uh, with the, the pro and the amateur side. So a lot on the line, pretty much what you've come to expect from every other big open, whether it's, you know, IEM Katowice or, uh, you know, ESL's Legendary Series. This tournament is definitely up there, too, with what, what the reward is on the line here. We had 5,000 plus people registering for the open part worldwide. And that, that number is just insane. 5,000 people wanting to play Hearthstone against each other to try to qualify for the finals where, where as you said, like 16 people will be facing the, the 16 selected pros. That's right. So uh, today we're going to have pretty much the same type of uh, dynamic that we've been come expecting over the past few weeks. Uh, we have a few players who have uh, basically been playing a lot over the past few weeks, but this week we're going to be featuring a few more. So Nick, why don't we run down the matches that we have for today? Uh, well, actually, I'm not sh entirely sure who is going to play today. I know that we are starting with Life Crit vs. Dog. And um, let's see. We'll have... Um, then, after Life Crit and Dog, we'll have Sixo uh, versus Tice. After that, Faramir versus Gara, And then Faramir versus Strife Crow. So uh, those are recognized names, great names from teams. Uh, Nihilum and Archon, Cloud9, Temple Storm, uh, Complexity. So I, I have really big expectations for those matches, especially, you know, uh, in between the, the BRM release. Like, uh, those guys are getting new cards and that they can create new decks, especially in the new meta game with uh, Green Patron decks. And uh, people still have a lot of, to innovate. Yeah, that's right. There's going to be a, a lot of interesting things today, especially on Dogs. And look at that. We have a Priest introduced in this lineup. Last time I checked... Priest wasn't exactly the best class in Hearthstone, um, or the most respected. What is the class again? It's, it's Priest? I don't know. Maybe he misclicked Paladin. No, I'm pretty sure that's Priest. And uh, if, if it's going to be that anti-aggro Priest, the, the Chinese Priest that people have been talking about with Deathlords and Prov uh, not Prophet Valen, uh, Valen's Chosen, I'm really interested in that. Um, I, I still don't know if we found like a really reliable non-control type priest, but uh, yeah, maybe we can find some surprises. It feels like some of these guys are having more fun uh, as opposed to bringing like the brutal, super efficient decks. Uh, last week we saw RDU and Sixo both play Pirate Rogue, uh, Murloc Zoo, and Fatigue Druid, and they both play the entire mirror match that way. So uh, some of these guys are just determined to you know put more. Uh, you know, showmanship on display as opposed to the super serious try hard deck sometimes. And I, I can appreciate that as well because one of them will have to win. I, I personally I love it. Just, uh, you know, deck build, innovate and try those decks in a competitive setting versus those players who you might na not have in their friend list. Like, I'm not sure how much Dog is playing versus Life Coach, but, you know, this is his chance to actually test some ideas and, uh, and new mechanics versus Life Coach. So if he's bringing Priest here, I I'm sure not only the Priest will be interesting, but also uh, the Priest will comply with his setup of decks for the Conquest here. Uh, he is bringing also Mage and Rogue, where uh, with Rogue there is not that much to say, I mean, there's um, like five card difference for the standard oil rogues. Mage can be really different. And there is a new mage card uh, released last week, and people are trying it out. The Flame Waker. What do you think about that card? Flame Waker is awesome, dude. It's, it allows you to do some really cool stuff. Uh, I think people have been trying a little too hard to build around it. So there's, there's some decks that just honestly are gimmicky because it's like if I draw Flame Waker, uh, you know, I can destroy the board if I don't. Um, 
Well, it's kind of like Miracle Rogue in a sense. Without gadgets and auctioneer, you just have spells. Like, oh, I have arcane missiles and, and mirror entity and mirror, oh, sorry, mirror image. And it's like, well, you don't actually have anything, <laughs> anything substantial. So then some decks try to just throw it in, like Mech Mage, um, which still doesn't feel feel like it fits as as well because you'd rather have like the Tinker Town or the Spire Tank. And then, uh, you know, some control mages have experimented with it too, but it's still not as reliable as you'd like to because you need big minions in that deck and Flame Strike only puts out like two damage. So it's it's still in an awkward spot where no one's really found the ideal list for it, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, maybe, maybe we can start seeing the beginning remnants of it. People have yet to figure it out because the cards haven't even been fully released yet. All right, the players are ready here. We can see the game. Uh, Dog is deciding to play that priest first versus life coach's hunter, and that's a face hunter. I can tell because I've seen a lot of arcing golems in my life. That's right. There's, it's only one direction that he's going to be hitting. It's going to be the face. Uh, well, against priest specifically, it's really dangerous. Uh, the Northshire cleric does represent a big threat because card draw is the primary way for priest to to get ahead. That's that's like the one big strength of priest. And Northshire Cleric draws allow them to bend the rules of how the, the game will end up flowing out. So um, it's it's a little bit tough because one dog doesn't have the, the coin. So usually if you're playing Pyromancers or things like that, it's going to be really difficult to try and abate the aggro. Um, you know, but more importantly, it's like this Northshire Cleric is going to be threatened already. Although now Life Coach is in a really awkward spot here because it looks like no matter what, um, this knife juggler might accidentally juggle on something and then you're going to have to overkill it. It's a little bit of an awkward dynamic right now. Yeah, it's definitely a, an interesting situation here. So maybe just... Um, so what he can do is he can kill one of the clerics and leave the other one to just stop a bit of a draw and then play a minion, um, which will be Mad Scientist. Mad Scientist the knife hitting a second um, cleric is questionable you can yeah. also go face um and still play that mad scientist i think he wants mad scientist on board yeah it's just better because you need to develop something and oh the juggle the juggle did not go the way he wanted it to and of course he had to weigh these options the other one was abusive sergeant hit the face which isn't really good because it can fill out the curve better considering how many three mana cards he had so now we have an interesting choice from Dog. It's like, do I want to put on the develop the board with this uh, Dark Cultist, or do I want to draw with the Northshire Cleric and potentially not get anything to play the next turn? Oh, well, so Dark Cultist, anyway. So the, the, if he plays Dark Cultist, then he has nothing on turn four. He will be only able to heal. So if he <laughs> uses the heal now and kills the juggler. It's also like a situation where you will be able to draw two cards, so maybe you will have something on turn four, and you deal with the juggler, or you and you have a free four left, or you just deal with the juggler and you have nothing on the board, but you will miss turn four. I think having um, a minion on board is better because you will be able to trade more effectively with whatever there is. Well, um, something that we don't really talk about too much is that. It is to gain three life by suiciding into the knife juggler and not healing the the cleric. Um, you know, you gain a little bit of life there because the the dark cultist can start absorbing the damage as well, and uh, you will you could just heal yourself, which is probably what could be done on turn three or four anyways. Because you know the the hunter wants to be aggressive. Now there's still no indication that this is the aggressive face hunter, right? There's It's coin knife mad scientist into, or coin knife juggler into mad scientist. Animal companion. This doesn't have any true indication that this is a face hunter. So dog still might be strolling, taking a stroll through the park if he thinks like, oh, this is mid-range hunter. You know, I have the um, shadow word death for <laughs> the high for mate, mate. never come, like that kind of stuff. And then like, oh, all of a sudden, like arcane golems and abuse surgeons come out of nowhere. Oh, he gets a death lord. That's a, a great top deck here because he didn't have a play. Well, he can still kind of like heal the, the cultist. So there was something he could do. And also we haven't talked about Harrison Jones being in his hand. Like Harrison That's Jones true. in this matchup is, is a very good card. Well, right. uh, Leopard Gnome is not going to be the most useful card right now. It just helps him fill out the curve for turn four, which is nice. 
It's exciting. He's, Come on. It's a leper gnome. <laughs> well, he's got he's got a kill and death lord here, which is the kill command and the abuse sergeant. Unfortunately, he doesn't have an iron beak owl to just push through. But well, that's a lot of resources something good. Spend. Death Lord dies, and he gets a second Leper Gnome. Dang. You're cashing in nine damage to just put two on the board. That's... Four. That's really yeah. painful. Oh, four, I guess? Yeah, but who says the Leper Gnome's going to survive? Get in there and fight, I think it's going to be like uh, the Leroy. That'd be pretty hilarious. No, oh, it's just Mad Scientist. And there is a secret. Like, we don't know what secret it is, but there might be a snake trap. Oh, man. That, uh, that sludge belt should draw, though. It's because huge, if, you yeah. if you... Wait, what? Oh, no. He, he, <laughs> he attacked before made. he uh, played the sludge belt. <laughs> so they didn't get the health buff. Oh, no. <laughs> Dog. Uh, this is what happens Dog when you play too much rogue. Oh boy, well, dog's a little embarrassed about that one. But you know what? Uh, I actually, it's a really big deal. I mean, I, I first thought it wouldn't have been the biggest deal, but the eagle horn bow does allow him to kill the first body now. Yeah, that that was actually uh, pretty important. That's why dog actually dropped and uh, he left. Oh boy, he, he went to take a shower. That one, he needed to take a, a breather. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? It's an early morning. Uh, dog still hasn't even made his bed or done his hair or shaved. You and, know, maybe he uh, didn't have that much practice with Priest also. <laughs> nah, it's, it's, it's definitely one of those things that isn't exactly the most counterintuitive sometimes. You know, some, a lot of times you want to do combat math first before you try to play minions, but that's uh, okay. Harrison Jones will recover save the board. The, the fact is, he knows he's playing face hunter now. And... Uh, He's still at 25 health going to turn 7 with Cabal Shadow Priest and most likely steal whatever comes out next. Uh, so he's, he's an okay spot. You know, it's not the, it's not the worst possible here. Although his cards still, aren't the greatest here. I'm still like looking at the ramifications of the buff mist. Like he also could have got like one more card and deny the trap possibly. Because if the, if the full body is getting killed, then the sludge token survives the 1-2. Maybe. And then you activate the trap and you get... Rid of the trap, and you draw two cards from Eagle Horn Bow. So that that was actually huge. That's right. Oh man, Holy Nova off the top though. That is excellent. Although, I, oh okay, okay. So I was, that was like, a snake oh. trap. right. The thing is, if he played explosive, if he attacked first with the Harrison Jones, then he'd be able to heal up Harrison Jones with. Um, oh no. It's misdirection. What? <laughs> what is happening? Wow. Life coach is completely out mind game dog here. Misdirection hitting his own face. Wow. For five. That was like a kill command. Yeah, that was actually amazing. That was better. It was only two mana and you didn't have to have a beast on board. Dog just doesn't know what's it. happening in this game anymore. Yeah, dog's, dog's definitely been struggling a little bit and now he's going to be put under even more pressure. Oh boy. So there is a secret right now. What secret is that? We see an explosive shop in hand. I think there are no more secrets for now. All right. I think like that there were. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. Oh, that's a pretty important draw. The Death Lord will stop another charger. I mean, the thing about like playing Light Bomb is that it kills your own board too. So you don't really develop anything. And the Cabal Shadow Priest is just a minion. Uh, that was, it might as well have just been like, you know, Yasera. It just won't stop any charge minions from attacking you. Death Lord is a pretty significant draw, though. Yeah, Death Lord is amazing because he can protect himself from the Wolf Riders. And um, maybe Doc can still stabilize. Like, if you trade your 5 free into, like, what do you trade into? I think you can kill the Juggler, actually. Because, like, Juggler might be free, dam free damage now, free power on board. But then if you play a minion, that's four. And uh, if you get something, like, if Juggler survives, it's potentially doing more damage. Oh, he is going to go for it. Uh, he's going to play the Death Lord, and he's not going to heal. He's going to opt to play uh, the minion instead. Now, he, he's banking on the fact that his opponent won't have kill command with a beast. <sighs> well, oh, there is man. kill command, but no beast. That's still a lot of damage. 
And um, if there is a beast draw and no specific heal from Dog, Dog is going to die in a couple of turns. Well, he's going to die next turn if um, if Dog even just attacks. I mean, Valen's Chosen is cool, but... You know, Dog has to be wondering, too, if his opponent has Quick Shot or Kill Command. And he's also noticed that his opponent played that from the left. His other option, of course, is just to keep building up the board, play the Cabal Shadow Priest, pass. Let his opponent do something, and then play Valence Chosen, pass, and then... Oh no, he's going to attack! Alright, that's game over. He's going to attack after playing a minion. He was afraid of a second misdirection, I believe. Oh, so you're right. Hmm. But that's the only re um, reason why he would play a minion and then attack into a face hunter. All right, so Life Coach is going to take game number one. Uh, mind gaming Dog with misdirection and Dog mind gaming, mind gaming himself with a slash belcher late play. Uh, the priest is not dead yet. Priest still has to win. So uh, face hunter from Life Coach is eliminated from the, turn, uh, the match for now, but then Dog has to shine with the priest. Give us some yeah, light. Not, not Dog's best showing with the, the priest deck here. Uh, you know, that, that could have costed him a lot. Um, there was still a lot of damage in the hunter's hand, but having a five eight, or sorry, a three eight minion uh, as the, as its haunt wall would have been really difficult for life coach to get past, and would have given him a couple of more health points. Now, we, of course, it just could have been simple as hunter drawing more damage, and it wouldn't have mattered. But um, you know, you have to wonder what if. Now, going to game two, uh, the priest, like you said, is still alive, and life coach has druid and mage remaining. Um, Mech Mage versus Priest is supposed to be good for the Priest. Uh, I'm not sure yeah. if Life Coach is bringing that exactly. I just I know that he likes he likes bringing the Mech Mage, so there's no guarantees there. Uh, and then if he's playing a mid range Druid, that's a class that uh, Priest is actually okay against. But how, how does the Death Lord variant go compared to the injured Blade Master version of Nimsh? Well, like when you think Death Lord and Druid, uh, you think that's uh, that's a bad card more or less because Druid will have uh, a lot of ways to kill Death Lord. Like you can help with, uh, yourself with Wrath, and also the quality of minions that are getting um, that you are getting from Death Lord is better because Druid mostly has the, the big minions. Like the, the smallest minions Druid is running is the Shade and Lux Ramas, which is still a great card to get from Death Lord. Uh, maybe Zombie Chow, but people are cutting Zombie Chow because we're getting into more kind of like mid range uh, control, and aggro decks are less and less popular. Uh, in the current metagame. So Druid, I think, is good versus this kind of deck. Also, like, uh, the minion power toughness, like, let's say, Druid the Claw being a 4-6 as a taunt and a Light Bomb not really affecting that that much. Um, so I think, like, Druid is actually um, good versus Priest. This Priest needs to uh, hit the Mage. It needs to be a Mech Mage, and uh, it needs to have a good draw. If it doesn't, Dog might be in trouble and might never win with a Priest. All right, well, let's go into game number two. We have that Mech Mage versus the Rogue deck. And, uh, you know, Rogue has been experimenting a little bit here, trying to see if they can tie in cards like Hungry Dragon. Don't really think people are too hyped upon the Dark Iron Skulker, though. That card, like, let me tell you that, that card is amazing if you get it off Unstable Portal for some reason, like, because yeah, like, it has usually high impact in those type of weird scenarios. But if you just straight up put it in your deck, it feels a little bit too clunky and slow. You'd rather just have Azure Drakes, um, you know, and a low The dog was, uh, was saying Gangap, what do you think about that? Like, we've seen it, uh, he mulliganed away. Oh, there's Gangup in this deck. Yeah. That's weird. So it's not going to be Mill Rogue, it's, it's just... Oil rogue with gang up, possibly. Uh, well, Stop. dog is um, a, a rogue innovator, and after GVG, he was uh, really like working on the oil rogue a lot. So maybe now he's bringing something new. Uh, from life coach, though, we can see a standard list, nothing really surprising. A great start, though, with um, no chugger, scientist, blast mage, yeti. He decides to use the coin early as opposed to like playing a uh, yeti on three and blast mage on four. Yeah, it's fair, because the Snow Chugger could shut down the Rogue's hero power. Um, it's before Deadly Poison, so he just needs to specifically backstab. The gamble didn't pay off, but you know, Life Coach has frozen his tracks for now. There is another backstab, but Doc has to think, like, how do you counter Mirror Entity? Because Mirror Entity is annoying, especially if you have a hand like this, um, just minions. So maybe 
the play actually is backstab and then Farseer, so that Farseer can trade into Farseer. You deal with Meredity, and then you're free to play your Violet Teachers and Belcher. Yeah, this is definitely the weakest minion in his hand by a far margin. And the Violet Teachers and the Sledge Belcher will come down a little bit easier. Uh, the thing is, he doesn't have anything to benefit the Violet Teachers just now. It's just a, it's just like a weaker Yeti at this point. And the Mech Mage can start capitalizing onto the board. Now, Life Coach did pick up the Tinkertown Technician, but this was the important thing of Dog shutting down the early game Mech. Uh, a lot of the decisions that he chose going for the backstab early uh, is now starting to compound on each other. Because having a 4-4 four -four and a spare part makes a huge difference, considering that um, you know Life Coach before didn't really have anything on the board. So I think Dog is going to eventually try to stabilize here with some of these cards. Um, the only problem is that he doesn't have any spells to really swing it in his direction at the moment. On the and other hand, he has... Preps and, and eviscerates. Yeah, he has no preps, no eviscerates. On the other hand, he has minions to, to fight for the board, so maybe he'll buy himself enough time to actually draw into something. If Dog draws Blade Flurry and some weapon buffs by the time Dr. Boom is being played, he might be able to take over the board and uh, and actually stabilize and push for damage. Because, you know, Rogue is a deck that can get really low on health. And then if you get that prep, if you get the sprint, you can come back and win from seven points of health, eight points of health, just clearing the board, de dealing a, a massive burst and a massive, uh, like, tons of damage. But then again, if uh, Life Coach is able to, to stabilize with those mechs, use the Blast Mage, maybe clear the board, and the Blade Flurry never shows up, Dog will be in trouble. Yeah, now Kalai Coach drew the Fireball, which is usually what you want to do to take care of the Violet Teacher, but he doesn't leverage that much. It's just three damage onto the board. If he plays a Yeti, though, it's also a little bit weak considering his opponent can easily deal with the Yeti. Through a card like Sap, and then all of a sudden, Rogue controls the board. So Violet Teacher is that much of a threat where a Life Coach has to fire the ball and, and halt development onto the board, giving Dog even more opportunity to set up a stronger, resilient board against Farseer. I, I like that play. Violet Teacher is too dangerous and Life Coach not knowing what's in Dog's hand uh, definitely needs to deal with that. Uh, on the other hand, right now, he has a nice play of um, of the Gnome and Blast Mage. But then if Blast Mage misses the, the Sludge Belcher, that might get weird. Uh, maybe a, be a better play will be just Mech Warper and a Yeti. That's uh, just more stable, less random, and you have two big minions on board. Yeah, it's true. The the Blast Mage might even be able to give you the snipe onto the Sludge Belcher. Although I guess you wouldn't want to bank on it. Because if you if you get if you play the uh the Blast Mage and then it only hits like one or, or zero to the Sludge Belcher, then it gets bullied. But the 5-4 body naturally contests the Sludge Belcher. Versus the Yeti, you would have to you have to ping. And you might not even sure if you had the guarantee of a of a mech next turn. Although the Yeti is just generally more consistent in terms of its stats distribution. Ugh. Oh man, he misses. So this is the worst outcome because not only... He, he basically wasted that one point of damage on Belcher. Belcher is still there. And uh, right. Dog pick up Sprint. That Sprint will be so massive next turn. Yeah, that sprint will be really big because it seems like this Violet Teacher will stick. Um, or no, actually, no, no, he can trade it in by... Um, no, 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 okay, okay, yeah. So it survives, it survives. It, it, just it, killed, should, it should stick. You kill the 3-3 free free with Belcher, you kill the 2-1 with Weapon, you refresh the Weapon, and you are pretty happy about your board. Uh, there is no mech, there will be a spare part in your opponent's hand, a Blast Mage can just stay. Um, it's still... The one tool is going to protect the Violet Teacher. I don't mind playing Thanos here either. No, I, I don't mind the draw. draw. It's another draw, effectively. Yeah, Thanos is alright because it's not like you're setting up a big flurry next turn. You you are going to cast that. You have to cast that sprint. So getting an extra card from Thanos is probably fine. Just getting new, five new cards, full hand that you can use, and, and you need those flurries. At some point, you need those spells. So Falnus, um, even though it, it is spell damage, spell damage is great if you're a rogue, uh, you, are, you will prefer to play something else. Can you imagine if this Sludge Belcher was an Azure Drake like normal? Um, it probably could have 
I mean, it would have let the, the value teacher die a lot easier. So, you know, these tech cards that Dog's working in, it's been working out okay so far. He's just going to need a little bit of help because uh, the sprint needs to pick up something big. He's got Gang Up, which doesn't help immediately. Um, especially considering that he's going to need to get cards that impact the board, not give him card advantage or even deck advantage here. Uh, also, one important thing is that he uh, Dog is running Big Game Hunter. And uh, Big Game Hunter was not in Rogue before, but right now it is becoming a staple. Like uh, I was talking to Tides of Time about it, and uh, he said that you have to run B Big Game Hunter because the people play all, like Dr. Boom. Everybody plays Dr. Boom. Uh, Zoo plays like Sea Giants. They're, they're like... Uh, handlocks are back now. There's Morganis. There are so many targets, and as a rogue, you're still drawing uh, a lot of cards. So one doctor, uh, one BGH is is fine. Like it's essential, actually. Yeah, it's also a good point. Um, not to mention that sometimes double sprint in the deck makes you deck out really quick, and you don't have you actually don't have anything left in the deck uh, to push through. That's where that's where you just lose against Warriors, for example, because you just run out of cards. Um, and they just have too much health and they put too much pressure on. You don't have enough removal. And that's where Gang Up can be pretty useful. You just you actually put in the minions that are super high impact. Uh, like if your opponent had a lot of Giants and you need to play the big game hunter multiple times. In this scenario, though, uh, he does have BGH. It's just about how much damage will these boom bots do. You're just scared because you're at 14 life, and that's not the most to be working with here. Oh, well, on the other hand, the double fireball is already out, so you have some breathing room there. And uh, having the BGH is amazing because without BGH, this, this board will be so scary. Um, the Thalnos is there, so he has the spell damage. He actually kept the spell damage on board. Now, it's all about the order. Like, how do you execute the turn? SI7 might finish. If Let's say you you want to play BGH, so it locks three points, three points of mana. You have five left. You have preparation. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's still a little tricky because you want to reduce the amount of damage the boom bots do as much as possible. Prep fan, and then into BGHSI7. BGHSI7 weapon up. Cross your fingers for minimal damage. It's seven damage from the boom bots. But you're like you said, the uh, fireballs are done. But that doesn't mean it's he's that fireball is completely out of the equation. It can be as simple as getting Antonitis and getting a spare part for him to to get a fireball. Alright. So no for life coach now. Yeah. It's um he is really low. Like a frostbolt. Uh, the the thing is like only frostbolt is dangerous now because life coach doesn't have any charge minions, and you would not expect charge minions. Maybe Antonidas will be a, a threat also. Like Antonidas is basically lethal. But life coach doesn't have Antonidas. He has a decent mech hand, so he needs to develop the board. But then Dog doesn't have that flurry as well. He needs the flurry, and if he doesn't get it, that might be troublesome for him. Yeah, considering that there's more minions on the board than um, than his, Dog will have to expend removal. If his opponent only developed two, it's easy to play Dr. Boom and Eviscerate and try to start pushing back for the board. Now, one another big X factor here, I wonder, is if Dog can even utilize something like Gang Up, uh, which I'm a little skeptical at this point. It would have to be like a Sludge Belcher Gang Up and then draw into the other Sludge Belchers to keep stalling out the board and really cross your fingers that your opponent doesn't draw into uh, any damage in removal. Yeah, at this point it looks like a dead card, but overall I like Gang Up. Just think about getting three copies of Dr. Boom to your deck. Like back to your deck. And then if the game is going long enough, you are just going to start drawing those Dr. Booms. Okay, so this is so when I see two Azure Drakes and two Sludge Belchers with Boom and Gang Up, it's like this just seems to be a, a control oriented rogue deck, right? It's not as tempo based with the Blade Flurries. Um, I mean, I, I mean, it does have Blade Flurries, but I'm saying it's not as oriented around being aggressive, right? I would have to imagine it's only like one oil, for example. Yeah, it seems like it's more oriented around board control. Uh, so maybe, maybe those uh, Pilot Shredders. 
he, he did have to cut something. Like he is playing that BGH, he is playing gang up, uh, double Azure, double Belcher, Dr. Boom, one sprint. Maybe he cut one sprint. I don't think so. I would expect Torison. Right. And he probably has no shredders, I guess. Yeah, I think like shredders are the first thing you cut. But then, like we said, board control rogue, where shredder is a great tool to control the board. It's true. But until Dog has clean removal, he only has minions to play. Wasn't hyped playing like Rogue without the depoison? Was he? That sounds something like hype would try. <laughs> he was, I mean, everyone's been experimenting in the past few days. It's been really tough to say what's been the best. Um, you know, speaking of tougher decisions, does Life Coach take out the first body here of the Sludge Belcher? Yeah, that's really tough. Like just it's, attacking with those two minions and pinging. Uh, you still have a 4 5 and a 3 4 on board, but you don't have any cards. And if you start drawing into Cogmasters right now, you might still lose this game. Yeah. Um, but the thing about not cashing in here is that Blade Flurry becomes much better, but it's like, it's not like you would stop Blade Flurry anyways. Oh, shit. Shiv? What is Shiv doing here? What what did he really cut? All right, so he didn't cut the poison. Hmm. All right. Shift for two, draw a card. Iron, Iron Beak Owl? Owl? What? So we've been seeing a couple of Iron Beak Owls in other decks too. Over the weekend, for example, um, one of the one of the players who was playing Oil Rogue had an Iron Beak Owl in the deck too, primarily to fight a lot of aggro. Oh, this is smart. He is denying the spare part, which means that right. he is denying Antonidas. Because Antonidas top deck with that spare part for life coach would mean death for dog. But without that spare part, he's seen double fireball. He's seen one mirror entity. So only three more spells, possibly death for life coach in his deck. Also yeah, like the intelligent play. I like it. Now life coach draws a Noyotron. That's not going to help too much, but the hero power eliminating the Iron Beak Owl is going to be pretty important. Man, Dog's on 12 cards. He, he can draw into the Sludge Belcher a pretty high chance at this point. He's got three of them in the deck out of 12, so that's a 25% chance. And of course, he has two draws. So he can tag Azure Drake back in, draw it again, and play Sludge Belcher. Every Belcher is effectively like he's gaining antique heal bot type health. I would also expect a heal bot from Dog, by the way, because um, seeing that Iron Big Owl, seeing one BGH, and seeing Gang Up, I think this is kind of like a toolbox deck, which runs, um, let's say, one of each. Like you run, like, the good, you, you have a couple of um, minions that are overall good, but you only want, run one copy because, because uh, you can copy those minions with Gang Up. All right. So I. I think uh, Drake and SI, unless he picks up something better, but that's almost as good as it gets here. Um, I think it's still nice. Like, uh, you can leave the 2 2 on board. Oh, Slash Belcher is, is great. The thing about so Slash Belcher part? is that uh, I guess it does stop the uh, damage from the Spider Tank. Now the question is, what are the cards? <laughs> Life coach is just uh, disappointed, really. Oh, he's getting a blast mage. I wanted to say that the blast mage is still a card that might be really close to lethal for life coach. Uh, life coach is uh, still nowhere near dying. He just needs the frostbolt if he hits face at least once. Well, he hits the Drake three times, so he can ping that down. Although now the Drake trades pretty easily into it, so not the best result, like you said. If he hit the face a couple of times, he would have been on a Frostbolt to win, right? Yeah, also now the problem is like he has to ping the Azure Drake, but he would love to ping face. And if you draw into that Frostbolt, let's say, in two turns, so so it's like pinging the face now pulls Dog on five. Let's say in another turn he doesn't draw Frostbolt, he pings the face again, and then he draws Frostbolt after that, and he has exactly four points of damage to win. Not pinging the face now is putting life coach uh, outside of the frostbolt win range. It's always easy to say until you get to that point, but uh, until he's holding the frostbolt, it's effectively not in his deck. 
Another yeah. sludge belcher, but that's not the important thing. He can play Dr. Boom now safely and start pushing for the lethal. Yeah, Dog is super safe on this board. Nothing is there. Playing SI. He got what he wanted. Life Coach is living on top decks. Ragnar's top deck would be amazing. There that's is a possible. Frost Bolt. <gasps> so he's got to ping the face. The thing is, now he's on a clock. He's got 13 damage staring him on board, 14 with the hero power. So that gives him two turns. Two turns would mean he's uh, one damage off lethal. I think you Frostbolt phase, actually, because if there is Lothab from Rogue, uh, I would not expect Lothab, but if there is Lothab, you then will not be able to Frostbolt twice next turn. That's and I think there's, point. there's no other target for, for, for that Frostbolt. Like, you're not going to Frostbolt uh, SI to limit damage. Wow. What a crazy back and forth game, but in the end, Dog seems to have stabilized just enough, unless. Nope. Nope. That's not it. Life Coach is one damage off, and the series is tied. What a crazy game back and forth, man. That's so crazy, actually, because if he would not ping the Drake, the 4 1, if he would ping face, he would give himself a chance to win the game with the Frostbolt top deck uh, and would not die. But the, obviously, it's not like an easy choice. Uh, just. Having a 4-1 Drake that's uh, possibly increasing the damage and giving a, a dog the chance to finish you uh, with the cards in hand. Uh, very close. Very close game. All right. Well, game number two is in the books. And that control rogue with, uh, with dog's weird tech choices. You know, he's got the Iron Beak Owl. He's got the gang up. Um, really interesting choices, but uh, looks like he's going to take that game, and it's too bad we can't see more of it. But uh, I guess the important thing is that Dog just didn't want it to lose, right? Because if you about be down 0-2, he had to win with everything again. It'd be the Druid deck. That deck is inevitably going to draw to a perfect curve, and uh, he would have had a, a really tough time. So well done to Dog. That wraps up the second game, and uh, now the series is tied with anything can be happening here, but uh, the big story still is can Dog win with the Priest deck? Yeah, that's the thing. Like, Can he not make misplays with Priest and actually get the win? Uh, I think he can. I, I think like he was just tired, and um, especially when you, as you said, like when you wake up in the morning, uh, you didn't have practice, you just sit down and play versus Life Coach. You can be a bit distracted, but like as the match goes on, like he just won with Rogue, he's getting more and more into the competitive mindset, and he he might be able to to get there and actually play versus Life Coach. Uh, right now, uh, Rogue and and Hunter um, is uh, out, so Life Coach needs to pick up Dread or or Mage. I think he will just continue with the Mech Mage. He just he needs a win with it, and then Dog uh, expecting Mech Mage. I, we don't know what kind of mage dog is running, but I think like uh, getting a priest here uh, would be interesting. Uh, I like priest versus mech mage from priest perspective. If you stop the early um, aggression, if you stop the early snowball from mech mage, then you just take the game because you have that cover shadow priest, you have the clears, you have the heals, and uh, mech mage was just going to top deck, and uh, you just continue with your game plan, which is countering theirs. Yeah, that's right. Well, it's assuming it goes according to plan here. Um, and of course, if Dog is bringing Freeze Mage, it'll be a, a deck that great against the Mech Mage, weak against the Druid. Pretty much the same that you've come to expect. Dog's been mixing it up, though. One of the more unpredictable players, too, which I like. Which I like. You know, he's he's brought some of the most uh, traditional decks. You know, like cookie cutter stuff. He's also brought really funky stuff. Look at this mage. This is funky stuff right there. Wow. Interesting. This I saw so I saw duplicate and I saw Twilight Drakes. I think it's So that makes me Ecodex. think that it's it's like hypes made from back in the day. Yeah, the the good old no fireball mage. <laughs> right, the the no fireball giants mage, which was yeah. Really interesting. Um, the way that the deck was played was very similar to Handlock. Although, the, I don't know if there are Mountain Giants. I mean, he's got Emperor Thorsten to make everything a little bit cheaper. I'm really curious to see if there's additional Dragon Synergies. Like, what if that there's actually... um, Blackwing Technician and other things like that? Yeah, that would be cool. Uh, well, for now, we see that there is it, it is a control, a control. Like, there is card draw, there is Arcane Intellect. Twilight Drake says, hey, I will be having a lot of cards in my hand. 
so this is going to be a big minion, I'm going to use it to trade with others, then um, Torison obviously saying again, I want to have a lot of cards in my hand and then reduce the cost of those cards. So uh, um, I'm thinking Eco of Medivh, that's, uh, that's possible. I know that lots of draws, Frozen Novas. Maybe it's a, a new kind of freeze mage with minions, dog mage. I I, I don't I don't know I don't think so. Um, it it doesn't give the impression that it's a freeze mage. There's not a lot of significant burn. The giants definitely indicate otherwise. So it seems to be a, another take on playing the giants mage. Now this a uh, Twilight Drake. Normally, it's pretty powerful to drop it onto the board, but against a class like Druid, which can use the Keeper of the Grove and leverage that Keeper of the Grove in order to do more damage, it's a scary thing. Um, the other thing is that Dog doesn't have early game Mad Scientists. Uh, the Mad Scientist is supposed to weed out the Ice Block, so that way, when your opponent uh, puts you down to zero or really close, you have the two Molten Giants. And you can get away with uh, surviving because you have the ice block. Otherwise, uh, you don't normally have taunt givers, and you have to use this frost nova. But it still doesn't mean that he can't kill you from the hand. Well, for now, we are not even sure if he's running med scientist and secrets. But then it like med scientist is so powerful and mage that it, it will be awkward if he doesn't. Uh, on the other hand, life coach had a pretty good start with um, wild grove, and then follow up about pilot shredder. Right now, deciding what he really wants to do. Um, Great, two great five drops. Uh, right, Life Coach still doesn't know which mage is it. Um, it suggests it's a freeze mage because of arcane intellect and free. But other than, other than that, he is in the dark. Okay, so Life Coach thinks this is freeze mage, right? He sees yeah, his opponent I've... paying and play arcane intellect. So he says, I want to hero power as much as possible. Uh, I don't want to play Lothab immediately. I don't want to say you do the cloud charge. Now he sees Twilight Drake and he's like, whoa, wait, that's not that's not a freeze mage, or is it? Is the handlock? Wait. wait, it's mage. It's is it the mage? Is it the handlock? It's Super Drake. <laughs> God. It is Super Drake. Look at that. 410. Yeah. Tell me a 410 a for, for four mana is fair. Well, uh, Life Coach doesn't have Keeper of the Grove, so this Drake is going to trade a lot with the minions, just slaughtering them like sheep. And um, Dog in a pretty good spot, I think. Um, even though he doesn't have draw, he will be able to coin Sylvanas or Torison next turn. Uh, depends on the board. Like if, if Life Coach actually builds up a, a solid board that Dog can't deal with, maybe Sylvanas would be a better play. But then, if uh, dog doesn't feel threatened, I mean, this is uh, this is the test, is it not? Oh, the Votha was actually a great play because it shuts down the coin now. Yeah, definitely. Um, there, there is Mad Scientist, but this turn after the coin shut down is so much worse. But it's like you said. Now he knows his point is not Cuba the Grove, so. Um, Sylvanas will become much stronger. And oh, now he can coin Flame Strike. <laughs> How's that for controlling the state of the board? Oh, that's actually amazing. Especially because Shadow uh, Shadow Nextramus is at four health. There is a keeper of the growth for life coach, but if he uses it now, he will not be able to respond to Sylvanas later on. It's also not as high impact as you think because the keeper of the growth does four damage. And now you know that it's not really the uh, Giants, or it's not it's not the Freeze Mage. It's more of the Giants version. So keeping that science on the, the Drake isn't the most important. Sometimes it's important to unfreeze your minion or to go past a taunted thing to go for the kill. Maybe even better to silence the Mad Scientist. Like that that's the better use of the Keeper than attack than attacking the Drake. I think for four. Certainly a lot of options for Life Coach. Is Life Coach going for face here? Is it is it enough? Wait, is this six, six, eight, twelve no. plus eight? He's uh, one damage off. One damage off. Oh my god, the Moltens. But like, well, on the other hand, Life Coach has swipe and keeper, so just going for face is a good choice here. It's a huge choice, um, especially because there's not a guarantee that Ice Block will come for Dog. Dog was super surprised by it. Uh, 
So he's gonna try to cash in this uh, mad science and needs to get ice block. That's like the Unless only option. If it's duplicate, if it's duplicate, he's du he's dead. Oh, we actually seen duplicate. You're right. You're right. So yeah, but even if this if it's ice block, then uh, still life coach gets two turns. Oh, ancient watcher. That's interesting. <laughs> ancient watcher is a dead card. Wait, is, if it, this is Ice Block, really. if this is Ice Block, can Dog win? Um, well, he has 26. So, yeah, 27 actually. Oh, it, it's duplicate. That's really bad. I mean, Dog's trying to go for a bluff here, but um, it's not going to work. There, like, there's no way. He didn't even Frost with the face. He could have Frost Nova and Frost Bolted, but he knows his chance of survival was uh, really low. And I think Dog was trying to play super quick that it didn't matter. I mean, this is actually a pretty funny situation here. There's actually three ways for Life Coach to kill his opponent. And if yeah. Life Coach was a super safe player, I could imagine him going for like silence on the on the Ancient Watcher and suicide into the Molten Giant and like swipe the Giant. So that way, it like, pops the Ice Block. Um, if it's Ice Barrier, it doesn't give him any health. And imagine control one of the Giants, which is funny because it's going to kill him anyways because the swipe does the one damage. Yeah, like swipe on Drake is fine. I think that's the play that Life Coach has to do. Because he if he has to assume that this is like, let's say, Ice Barrier. Or um So if this is a nice barrier, you do swipe. And now Life Coach will be surprised that this oh. is Yep. Oh I kill him, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, he's simply dead. <laughs> yeah. Really good stuff here. Um from Life Coach. Really good opportunity to recognize aggression and, and take it. I really like that. One play with Savage Word and the Druid the Claw. 20 damage in a turn. Absolutely absurd. And uh, that was what he was building for. That's why he saved the Druid of the Claw in the first place, right? He saved Lotheb and Druid the Claw in case he wanted to press for, um, you know, drew turn seven for Lotheb and turn eight Druid of the Claw. So he wanted to develop the shit next round. It's really good planning and thinking from him. Uh, on the other hand, got to have to feel bad for Dog here. He's come with, with pretty unique decks here. He's got that control-ish rogue. Got that giant's mage, and now he's brought a priest, and he hasn't been rewarded that well, at least not yet. Well, he is still not out of the tournament, and uh, right now he's going to face the mech mage twice. And um, mech mage is ori originally very bad versus freeze mage. Uh, I, I will just have to like think how is the giant's mage uh, going to do versus mech mage, and I think without doomsayer. That might be awkward, but with Molten Giants, that might be amazing. So we haven't seen much heal from, from Dog, but uh, I will be really interested to see how Mech Mage is going to deal with this Giant's Mage. Because, you know, you can't really go face fully if you don't have those Fireballs ready. So you will be strangled, um, not attacking and overextending because there will be a flame strike as well. Uh, might be a very difficult matchup for Mech Mage. And then Mech Mage versus Priest is again a good matchup for, for the Priest. So even though Life Coach is winning right now 2-1, two, two, it doesn't mean that he's going to win because Mech Mage is a liability. Uh, I mean, it is, but Mech Mage also can just draw into punishing things for the Priest. Especially a priest that doesn't have Alcanized Soul Priest and the Circle of Healing combination. What do you do against Pilot Shred? Like, if, if he goes, um, like, uh, Early Scientist into, like, like into a Tinkertown Technician that has 4-4 four because four he played Clockwork Gnome and then Pilot Shredder and then Yeti, it's like, he actually can't clear that. Uh, and Priest can't deal with it easily, so... Um, if he doesn't have that Alcanized Soul Priest combinations, he's going to struggle ultimately in this match. Uh, that's not going to happen just yet. Uh, that's going to be potentially game five. And that's assuming Dog can even get past this Mech Mage with his Giant's Mage. And the Mech Mage has an amazing opening with Clockwork Gnome into Coin Spider Tank, Technician. Uh, I think Mulliganing Pilot at Sky Golem here is fine. You, you would like to get a Shredder, you would like to get a Blast Mage, maybe even Dr. Boom. Um, even though Sky Golem is not that bad, especially if you curve out so well. Um, where for Dog, he's just having the Frostbolt for now, just waiting for the rest of the cards. Ooh. Do you mulligan like being Dog? Do you mulligan for Molten Giants or do you mulligan for Card Draw? What do you think, Freden? 
Uh, well, for card draw is the most important thing, generally speaking. But against a deck like this, you just need to control state of the board. The only thing, only problem is that um, he doesn't have anything that guarantees that. Like, what do you usually do on turns two and three as this major deck? It's usually pass or draw. Um, so he doesn't have a choice. I think he wanted to go for Twilight Drake and really cross his fingers for no mirror entity. Wait, did Life Coach Mulligan that hand and he was aiming for Mech Warper's Snow Chargers, I believe, and he got double mirror entity? I mean, is mirror entity that bad? Well, you would like to get mirror entity from, like, you would definitely prefer Med Scientist. And um, mirror entity might not be bad against this kind of deck that Dog is running. Um, but if Dog is getting like a small minion, like a Mad Scientist, he'll be able to play around it. And then uh, it kind of works against the plan that you have as Mech Mage. You want to play minions early, you want to stabilize a board, and then you want to protect that board with the Mirror Entity. It's not like Dog is going to be rushing the game. And, you know, like when, when Life Coach plays Mirror Entity, Dog will be like, all right, you just spent free mana and did nothing this turn. I have time. Let's wait for turn seven where I can flame strike your board. So I think the long game actually works for Dog. That's why Morality is bad for Life Coach for now. Even though Dog has all those big minions in hand. Fair point, fair point. I think Life Coach would rather his opponent just ping again, which is most certainly what's going to happen here. Dog cannot take that damage. Unless he plays Duplicate to set up for the Twilight Drake. That's also a possibility here. But that makes it even more painful uh, of the mirror entity if he went for that play. I think it's better to uh, duplicate the Belcher if possible. Because um, Life Coach will be putting minions on board. He will be trying to attack. And uh, even though Twilight Drake is great for trading, you want to ensure that you have those taunts. All right, so for Life Coach... Um, Seems like you just play the, the spider tank and go for face. This hand is really awkward and doesn't look that good. Well, he can squeeze in the mech warper too. If he mech warper, he can coin the spider tank. That seems you can to also be mirror. Point. Sure. You can possibly mirror entity as well if you expect the Twilight Drake. Yeah, mirror entity has some viability here because you know your opponent wants to play something on turn four, like Twilight Drake. The only thing is, if you play Mirror Entity, you're doing one damage this turn. And if he if he had like Arcane Intellect or hate even worse, he had nothing. You just gave him a free turn to set up. All right, so he decides to go with Spider Tank. Um, I I, I think both players are fine. Like if you play Mirror, uh, you play Mirror only because you have two of them, and your hand is otherwise bad. So you hope for a bigger uh, minion. But then again, if you play the Mirror. Like dog might not might just pass the turn, just kill the free one, and uh, maybe you even draw cards because it's the one one is not doing much. So you're giving your opponent more time. That's why life coach reacted. So now he's facing a four seven. Uh, he can go to five mana. He can play um, warper and yeti. Yeah, yeti. Warper Yeti gives him, yeah, actually maximum mana there. Um, he can also switch the Drake and clear it with a free one and a ping. That would be two mana, and um, and still play Mirror Entity, Coin Entity. No, that, that's three mana, I believe, because the hero power costs two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so great. he can't squeeze that in. I mean, there's a lot of sequence of plays here, but that was not the one that Dog wanted to see. It's always painful to get, um, maybe not bad RNG, but uh, to, to lose in a game to a random spare part. And the switch was actually one of the, I think, the best spare part here to be able to deal with the Twilight Drake. But still, Dog is again in a good shape. Like, just playing Belcher now, um, yeah. this Spider Tank is not doing much. Well, you know, he, he's taking a commanding position onto the board. There's a couple of things that are troublesome, though. You know, the Goblin Blast Mage, having a Fireball. It's like you said, duplicate on the Sludge Belcher is the ideal scenario. If um, Life Coach Fireballs this, uh, the Sludge Belcher, I think uh, Dog will be fine with that because he is still going for 
It was Moltens. So not for Life Coach to not have Burst in hand, Doc will be happy about it. But obviously, not having a, a fireball at all is, is even better. Mm-hmm. Well, Life so, Coach draws a Tinkertown Technician. That gives him a couple of interesting options here. The uh, th- whirling, whirling blades and then uh, attack. Sure, or another reversing switch. <laughs> yeah. What to do? What to do? Uh, otherwise, if you just go for the normal plays of developing the Yeti, because that is a stronger minion, you probably just want to throw down uh, Mech Warper as well. He really needs to think like how much he wants to deal with the Sludge Belcher, and is he expecting duplicate? Right. But now I, I, he probably has a vague idea what is he playing against. I mean, is it worth frost bolting this so that way he can't get the duplicate onto the field? Oh, armor plating, so close. Yeah. Need whirling blades or the versing switch, and being able to get off this duplicate is a really big deal. A really, really big deal. Also, Doc pick up the sheep, uh, which would be great versus the uh, mirror entity. Oh, you're it's, right. Oh my god, that's so big. It's actually amazing because you deal, you deal so much damage to board and then Flame you deal with it. For four mana. He's not going to draw, though. He's going to set up the, uh, the awkward trade for life coach. So the life coach can't not do anything. It's uh, it's so bad. Like if you if you just ping the sludge belcher, you're giving uh, dog double sludge belcher, and sludge belcher is troublesome. You can uh, try developing the board, but then again, you expect flame strike next turn. So this is so painful. Like dog is twenty one. There is a secret. Right. It's looking really bad. Well, um, he can always just not ping. Right, I don't he, think he's gonna he's gonna give duplicate, but there is a way to play around duplicate, which is never to attack into your opponent's minions. Uh, yeah, but then how do you win? Well, I mean, you just you build up a really strong board, and then by the time he gets duplicate, you just crash really hard. It's like you said, though, he's playing around flame strike. He can't do everything. Yeah, I think you have to do everything in your power to. Clear the board, have two, maybe three strong minions, and squeeze in some damage, and just give yourself enough time to pick up burst, um, as in fireballs or Antonidas or boom. Uh, but you can't be you can't be passive in this matchup. The longer the game goes, the the, wor the worse uh, for you. All right, so dog is just uh, in a great position here, still he super is. safe. He's taking his time. You know what's even funnier too? It's like um, now he's pretty much got everything, and his opponent is mere entity, and Dog knows this, so he can take his time to set up a better play. He can play the explosive sheet next turn, ping it, and then play the Drake, which gives him the most flexibility in terms of the options. If he played the sheep this turn, he would have been um, he would have been stuck with that fire, uh, that frost bolt. Uh, and the explosive sheep is much more versatile for getting AOE out. That's true. This is really cool, man. I'm actually really impressed to see the deck working out this way. Yeah, it's like um, the old grindy deck that uh, first hyped and then Strife Crew played. No real win condition. You just grind them out. Just play those stones till they just give up and, and stop playing Hearthstone. Yeah, it's, it's it's essentially a control deck at its heart, you know. That's that's what really control decks do. They just keep smacking down, and just hopefully your your opponent runs out of uh, ammo to kill you with. Here he and is enjoy the fireworks, guys! Happy New Year! <laughs> so many she sheep exploding, uh, but he was not able to clear the the yeti. And a life coach picks up fireball, which means that he has nine points of burst in his hand. Um, with this, well, he's got a reversing switch again. Yeah, so. yeah, he's going to <laughs> trade. Perfect trade once again. Doc's like, God, a second reversing switch. 
and now he gets a freeze. Um, well, for life coach, that's uh, reasonable because y- you could also consider going for face, like because the long game is worse for you, and you only have burst. So it seems like the only strategy you can win here is just by bursting your opponent. But then you don't know if there are heal bots, and if there are heal bots in the deck, you get them lower. They play Moltens, they play heal bots, and you expect something like Eco. So I understand why life coach went for the board, board control. Hmm, well, he's weighing the option of whether or not he wants to use the armor plating here or ping something. By going for the armor plating, you just get blown up by fireball anyway, so pinging here is perfectly okay. Mad Scientist can trade into anything, um, you know, just weighing the opportunity if his opponent had fireball, so he can, he can t- use that Mad Scientist to trade and pick up that ice block. On the other hand, life coaches, mad scientists, not picking any secrets. Double mirror entity is out of the way. Yeah. And and he also had the, the draws that he's get, getting are, are pretty bad. Like just a single mech warper here. Yeah. Is Where's it, his Antonitis? If he had Antonitis, just look at how many spells he has. Yeah. If he gets Antonitis, well, actually, with so many spells, Antonitis will be amazing. Well, yeah. Just, of course. Just he's got so much burn now. I do know that in the past, I think hype ran one ice block. So if his opponent, there's that anti heal bot you're mentioning, him. If he did have one ice block and he was able to ping it down and, and accumulate enough burn, there is a chance. But I'm thinking that dog runs away with this game. He's got a full hand. Uh, he's got removal. He's got heal. He's got big threats. I mean, he can even plop down molten giant next turn and just press for damage. Life coach needs an Andonidas next turn, I think. I think because Dog is going to just start playing minions and being aggressive, and then set up yourself to win in two free turns. So uh, life coach needs to pick up Andonidas next turn, get those fireballs, and then take two turns to win the game and not lose the game, uh, which is possible because he has the um, the coolant and he has the frostbolt. But other than that, it will be tough. Oh man, life coach is also thinking about um, you know what secret is this? You know, should he should he let his fire tank just easily be killed off by a sludge belcher, versus he can go for the the slime one two duplicate instead of the three five sludge belcher? It's a lot of like complicated scenarios where he has to kind of weigh his options, but his his percentage of winning this game is dipping by the minute here. Oh, Torison pickup by dog. By the power of Ragnaros, Emperor. The card is so great. Like right now, Thorison is granting how much mana to Dog? Six or seven? That's a sick wild growth. Well, I mean, it's beyond that. It's it's gotten to the point where it's kind of like uh, having three or four innervates in the deck. Sylvanas is unnerfed. Flame Strike is finally playable. <laughs> Polymorph has finally been balanced along the lines of Hex. And Healbot is OP. Healbot is uh, what every control player dreams of at this point. Every aggro player's nightmare. What to do? Left coach draws Dr. Boom. Um, the bigger picture, though, Emperor Thorazon is a big threat. Uh, the body combined with the effect for a deck like that, high priority target. But you know that your opponent has duplicate. You know he has it. There's two secrets onto the field, Nimsh. So the secrets are duplicate and ice block, I believe. Yep. This means that um, well, life coach has to play Doctor Boom. Like there is no way. And um, I'm just thinking there is a way for him to win this still uh, without Antonidas, let's say. So he plays Boom, and then Dog is going to get something. Possibly a Belcher. Life Coach has 9 points of burst, so he can put um, Dog to like 8 points of health. So, in a really weird situation where Dog ends up at 4 points of health and a bomb dies on Dog's turn where Ice Block cannot be activated, the bomb can hit Dog for 4 and Life Coach will win. But that might be the only case. That's really idealistic, to say the least. How about just dropping the, the giant here and smacking phase? I like it. 
uh, life coach still in a similar problem as before. And everything is getting cheaper. He needs his Antonitis. That's like his last hope. Double Fireball. Hmm. How much damage is there incoming? That's 8, 16 points of damage. Um, Dog actually doesn't have lethal next turn. So Life Coach unloads this turn for 12, for 13. He can put Dog to 5. He got 15 damage in the hand. And yeah, but he, if these boom bots hit, then... Um, I mean, miracles can happen. Oh, all right. Well, kills off the Sludge Belcher. Probably not what he was hoping for. Just a little damage to the face for Life Coach. No. Nope. Well, that so now be, with the... uh, this might be where Life Coach taps out in just a second here, because it's like at this point you actually know you can't kill your opponent. Yeah, right now it's like, even if he top decks Kazan Mystic, it's not enough next turn. Because like you want to deal 13 with the hero power, you want to use the hero, hero power, and then your opponent is 5, and then you have Frostbolt next turn with the ping, and that's 4. That's still not doing much. Yeah, Frostbolt um, cool. I mean, he's going to stall, um, but in the big picture of things, it's Dog is in such a good spot when he knows his opponent's roping like this. If... Life coach top decks Antonidas. Oh, there is Extraza. Um, so nope. No way for Life Coach to to get out. Even with Antonidas. That's not Antonidas, it's 15 points of damage. Oh man. Wow, he drew all of his burn. Yep. That's a I little mean, burn. Even if he did though, a dog would have just bounced up back with uh, with Alex Straza or just used Heal Bot. Like that's how one sided this game has become. Um, it's mostly because Life Coach had a really slow start. Like uh, he got double Mirandy, he wasn't able to use them um, well. Like there, there was this this uh, sheep top deck for for Dog to be able to use that and play around mirror entities. He never did any pressure in this game from the beginning. Right, that's that's the biggest uh, drawback to this mech deck, deck uh, mech deck. Yeah, um, the mech mage because it sometimes defeats itself with draws. That you just don't get. You line up the removal and the spells all together. Uh, you don't get anything. Life Coach taps out. This game is going to uh, finish, which means the series will go the distance. We're going to have five games to determine the winner. And it's been kind of a slugfest so far with Dog versus Life Coach. Uh, really interesting back and forth. I'm loving Dog's deck choices, man, and it's worked out so far. The last problem is Priest. And that was a question that we posed at the beginning of the series, Nims, and it, it might be haunting Dog at this point. Uh, well, I think like Priest is actually good versus Mech Mage, so um, Dog is in a in a good spot. And as I said before, like if Dog, Dog seems to be in the saddle now, like he won versus Life Coach two times in a row, I believe, right? Like it was with the before it was with Rogue. Now it's um, with the Mage. So right now he's in a good position to actually take the game, uh, Priest versus uh, Mech Mage. But, uh, but as you said, like, uh, Mech Mage can also have this opening that's really hard to deal with if you're a priest. And everything everything will come down to decisions and the draws for both of those players. But I think Dog has an edge. All right, well, I'm going to I'm just going to go ahead and say if Life Coach gets reversing switch ever on the Death Lord, I think it's one of those things where it can blow out the game. You just reversing switch, trade in, snow chugger. Or mad scientist even, and uh, you you put out Antonitis. That that would be like the gate. I mean, that, that you, you kind of laugh at the idea of that happening, but it feels like that's happened before. Whenever you've played Death Lord, everyone's been on the receiving end of Death Lord summoning out Ragnaros or Ysera one time, and you know, even even like uh, recently, I, I played Death Lord Priest and I summoned out Chromagus, and I just got blown out. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> All right, game five is ready. The players are ready, and we are going to see something amazing here. here. There is Sarah, there is Death Lord. Dark Cult is in the coin for Dog, for Life Coach. You do mulligan everything. Oh, he is actually keeping Blast Mage. He gets Spider to shoot it back, and Mirror Entity again. Yeah, Mirror Entity is not that great, honestly. Um... There's a lot of ways for Priest to play around it with such low drop cards. And a turn two pass. Turn one, turn two pass from Life Coach. That's really bad. 
the life coach is just smiling, like he doesn't believe it. And we talked about how important it is to actually snowball as mech mage in this matchup. Well, he doesn't even have a turn three play outside of mere entity. That's so bad. <laughs> this is one of the worst stars in the history of Hearthstone. And uh, I mean, by the way. We We've seen worse for sure, like Control Warrior drawing all of its biggest minions, but even then, the Control Warrior can still armor up. Yeah, we've, we, we, I think we've seen it at the DreamHack Booker, as Lothar had only six drops, and like on turn five, he basically fiery, played Fire Warx, and he still won the game. Um, right. Doc here in a good spot. Doomsayer time. That, that's how you turn around. Doomsayer? The Doomsayer off the Pilot Shredder would be backbreaking like after all of that doomsayer into the antonitis dog's worried man there's a one in 64 chance it happens or whatever the amount of two drops there is 60 something actually a patient assassin is fine as well mana addict not necessarily uh, by the way, like uh, from my experience, this game mostly ends up with Priest uh, mind-controlling Antonidas. And uh, <laughs> that's mostly what happens. There is that mirror entity getting Dark Cultist, so Life Coach is getting something on board. Yeah, now he can... Um, now he, he can actually get through this Death Lord because he summoned that mirror entity. Clockwork Gnome is great. Like, he will be able to play Blast Mage, but do you really want to play Blast Mage here? That's the question. Does he want to get past the Death Lord? Because he's afraid of heals. So, do you just Frostbolt Death Lord and just kill it with those two minions? It seems that's... like that's the best course of action because any spare part, the only spare part that would be useful is the reversing switch. Everything else would make you just a little bit short of damage because the man edit gets two attack. And even if you get whirling blades, it's uh it's only plus one. So you need to frostbolt this. Alright, so we're going to see Death Lord going down, I believe, and Life Coach is going to get a minion. Clockwork Gnome is even better now because he is sure that he's not going to get that Clockwork Gnome from Death Lord. Is it Antonidas though? No, no chugger. No I was also wondering if Life Coach should have guaranteed um, the buff onto the Tinkertown Technician for the for the health on the Dark Cultist, because then that's a minion that Priest still can't deal with. But I think his rationale is he knows his opponent can't deal with a big mass of minions as easily anymore without the Circle of Healing combination and the Alkai Soul Priest. Yeah. So if he just goes for the safer play of building up the minions and then uh, letting his opponent deal with threats one at a time, he can sneak in more damage. That was still a very powerful turn for Life Coach. Like he got um, he got that mech and he was able to develop a four four. Um, but still, uh, right now it's all about the board, and that's not something Life Coach wants to do. Like Life Coach wants to go for face with this deck uh, here. Uh, Spy of the Sky Golem maybe might be a, might be the play uh, if you. You trade a 4-4 four, four into 5-4. And um, if you play a 6-4, uh, Dark Cultist is not really contesting it. So you might go for face with the Snow Chugger. If you play, if you like trade a 5-4 into 4-4, four, four, you can play Blast Mage and clear the free free. I think Blast Mage is actually better. Similar in power and toughness. And you have a very good chance to clear this cultist. Yeah, I think I like Blast Mage over the Fireball play too and the, the Pilot Sky Golem just because you would have a stronger board afterwards. Pilot Sky Golem, of course, is uh, getting clunkier as the turns go on and if you don't place Pilot Sky Golem now, you're definitely not playing him next turn when you want to play Dr. Boom. Also, Pilot Sky Golem has no RNG involved for now. Like, you are for sure getting a 6-4 that's on board. And with Blast Mage, there will th th there is a chance that Blast Mage will miss, and you will have to attack um, Cultist with the Snow Chugger and lose it. Especially because you follow up with Dr. Boom mm -hmm. um, next turn. 
All right, what's going to pop out of this uh, this pilot sky golem? It's a little nerve wracking. The four drops can be very detrimental, especially now that hungry dragon is in the mix. That's another four drop that's very deadly to deal with. Uh, pilot shredder, wood elemental. Yeah, anything actually, anything that has more health and attack is bad because light bomb will come down next turn in response to Doctor Boom. A two four. Oh. With charge. Interesting. Old Merc guy. That's actually pretty bad in stats. <laughs> yeah, that's really weak. Oh, double fireball. That's actually lots of burst. And I think this turn is amazing for Doctor Boom because it was green and it was turn seven. Yeah, but his opponent has Light Bomb. That's definitely one of the best ways to deal with it. He's got Light Bomb and a Zombie Chow, too. So a Zombie Chow can come down uh, afterwards to tank some of the damage. Oh. And Dark Cultist survives. That's also annoying. Also, the bombs like just have burn. You're right. Hmm. Yeah. The bombs didn't deal that much damage as well. So here, uh, whoa, that's uh, that's a bit awkward. Five, seven. Life coach can go for the zombie child trade, and then clockwork gnome, blast mage, like trade ping, and then clockwork gnome blast mage. And if dark cultist survives that, that would be actually pretty sick. I guess you could be extra safe and. Um... Well, yeah, I guess you're right. Never mind. I was just trying to think about maybe the best sequencing, but you want to kill out the zombie child first as a priority. Yeah. I am ready. Alright, oh, here we go. That's actually really dangerous. Oh, he kills both at the same time. Gets it. That was risky, but uh, of course, it was a strong likelihood based off how much health was there in the, the targets. Well, dog, you've done a good job so far, but uh, how are you going to pull yourself out here? Oh, well, he just thought steals fro uh, Frostbolt. That's going to help him a lot. Yeah, that's not bad. And uh, Life Coach with only spells and the Spider Tank. Oh, but he's so close. Yeah, that's like 13, 18 points of damage. 19 with the ping. Well, you don't go for it. You just yeah. develop the, the minion now and go for face. Plus one attack is fine. Plus one attack, oh. plus one health, place spider tank. Yeah, it's okay. Just cross your fingers for no shadow madness. <laughs> shadow madness will be devastating. But then again, he has like actually like lethal next turn if uh, if Doc doesn't heal. If if Doc clears and doesn't heal himself, that's lethal. You're right. But you have to clear heal. Wait, that's lethal. Yeah, uh, he's not able to deal with it. So life coach is going to have this mech mage cross the finish line. Oh no, it's not. It's, oh, damage. it is. It is because he has spider tank. Right. I mean, dog recognizes that uh, you know he couldn't have played around that. There's just actually nothing he could have done there. Um, and the priest struggles in the series, but ultimately, I think dog should be happy with how everything went out. He went for an experimental lineup. It turned out to bring Life Coach to the edge, and Life Coach was playing a, a pretty strong lineup by all means. You know, Druid is pretty deep, is pretty good across the board um, in Conquest, even though if it doesn't have the best field percentages, it's just it's a really strong deck to bring. Still has Mech Mage, and um, it is overall, I think it still performed pretty decently. And I think you just need to get more experience too. Who knows? Maybe Dog should have won that first game, right? Yeah. Where, <laughs> He exactly. uh, took too much damage from the hunter because the sludge belcher misplaced. We had, so. we had a very interesting uh, showing of two different schools how you approach the meta game after the new cards are released. So Life Coach just brought the cookie cutters, the deck the decks he is familiar with, without much innovation. The decks that he is really he has faith in, and Dog brought those decks that are really new to test things out and to surprise uh, his opponent. Uh, I think both strategies are valid, so I I'm really happy that we shot, uh, we were able to see the clash of those strategies. Uh, but as you said, like the dog stumbled a bit in the beginning uh, with Priest versus Face Hunter, and maybe that was the decider. But in the end, um, a pretty amazing match. I I'm happy that uh, that we were able to to witness it. 
Sounds good, man. Well, uh, that's going to wrap up our first series of the day, guys. we got plenty more Hearthstone action. Hope you guys have been enjoying it. Uh, this event is brought to you by NVIDIA. Uh, there's some promotions going on. Uh, first of all, I want to remind you guys about the NVIDIA Shield tablet that all the players are getting. It's an opportunity to play Hearthstone on a tablet. I got to sit down with a lot of it this week. And personally, I love the stylus on the Shield tablet. It's really nice. Um, and, of course, we're going to be broadcasting on Wednesdays. Uh, this was an adjustment for Black Rock Mountain Wing. We recognized that it was a little bit conflicting with the release times and made things a little more complicated. So it's 8 to 12 p.m. PST uh, every Wednesday or 17 to 21 if you're in Central Europe. Uh, and that's the time that we've been flying for now. So hopefully you guys can continue to tune in. Thanks so much for everybody watching. We're going to be back with more action here in just a few minutes. So stay tuned. Uh, more